We're here at Libby Dam in northwest Montana, which is an important source of hydroelectric power and also provides flood control. Normally you wouldn't see water coming over the spillway behind me, but this week in early June, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, in cooperation with BPA, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and states and tribes, is spilling extra water down the river in hopes of helping white sturgeon. These are enormous, endangered, long-lived fish that haven't spawned successfully in a few decades. The idea behind this spill is to recreate more natural spring runoff conditions when the river is high and lead the sturgeon to swim upriver to much more productive spawning grounds. There are biologists out in the river checking to see whether the fish are moving. The latest population estimate showed that it was about a thousand fish. Yeah, it's real tough to assign success to a population that's so suppressed. That's why it's so critical for us to spawn as many fish as we can right now. We don't get a do-over. There's two different trains of thought. Either the dam has changed their behavior so they don't come here anymore, or the dam has changed conditions at where they currently spawn. And we don't know which is right. We don't know anything about what these fish need for survival. Where All we spawning. know is where they're spawning now is not working. There's one. 559. And that's a female that we tagged this year. Some of the adults spend a good chunk of their time in the river before they spawn and after they spawn. And some of the fish are mostly in the lake. And they only come to the river to spawn and then they quickly go back. And then there's in between. They're not all doing the same thing, which is really surprising. Nobody here. We've been monitoring river conditions and fish migration for quite a few years now, and so what the spill test is doing is approximating a better water year in the lower river here. So we're trying to create a depth that was closer to pre dam conditions with spill, uh, with the habitat work that the tribe and others are, are bringing onto line. And the other half is we're trying to learn if our temperature management strategy at Libby Dam is going to be effective in pairing with the flow conditions. The USGS has done work for almost a decade in examining the effects of flow on substrate, how the river channel changes with flow. But what the GS did was show us through their coring that the sediments downstream have probably always been sand, silt, clay, and that our flows really had very little effect on that. What we're doing now is, is we're closely in tune with, with what flows did, and that is provide depth, move substrate, uh, provide fish spawning migration cues to make these fish migrate where we think they could be successful in, in their, their spawning. Well, the tribe's been working for several decades on restoring the population with the aquaculture program. Basically, we're creating the next generation here at the hatchery. We've been able to have good survival of fish that we put back out into the river, but we also realize that there's a need to restore the habitats. And so that takes several different actions and activities beyond flow or spill. We need to have complex habitat where you have a deepened channel and a connected floodplain that provides those ecosystem functions that are missing right now. And then also productivity is really low. Libby Dam holds back about 60% of the phosphorus. And because phosphorus is a building block for all the different trophic levels, we're adding nutrients to the system. By restoring the nutrients, we provide the food that the fish need for survival. So habitat and food and flow probably all kind of go hand in hand. This facility is actually a conservation hatchery. What we try to do is maintain the genetics of the Kootenai white sturgeon until they can sustain themselves. To 74 kilos, which is about 160 pounds. Female sturgeon, to reproduce the very first time, it's usually 26 to 30 years in age, and then it's three to six in between cycles because they have so many eggs. So it's going to be 20,040 for the first female out of this year class to even start to reproduce. The recruitment into the wild stock is non-existent or very limited. So we're trying to maintain the genetics until they reproduce and recruit in numbers 
path towards extinction in the wild. And so each year a sense of urgency gets ratcheted up another notch. There's a lot of resources going towards studying the species so we can streamline recovery. Uh, I think in the next three, five years or so, we'll look back on this and say we learned a lot. And that was really valuable data we collected and, and tests we ran.